Amen? So tonight, as you all well know, is the last name of God that we're, we're going to be discussing on Wednesday nights. Amen? And tonight's name is Jehovah Shuri. It starts with a T, though, T-S-U-R-I, but it's, it's pronounced Shuri. Shuri. What is it? What is it? You're not Shuri? Amen. It's a good one. It's a good one. I'm glad it's in there. Huh? No. It's uh, God is our rock. God is our rock. Amen? He's my rock. Amen? Uh, If you got your Bibles, open them to the 61st Psalm. I wrote down a few things about God as our rock. Uh, Rock, the word rock actually is mentioned over a hundred times in the Bible. In both the Old and the New Testament. It's a word that's used for God. It's used for Jesus Christ. And it's just used for a physical rock sometimes. Amen. But tonight... uh, It is God is our rock. T-S-U-R-I. Shuri. Shuri. If you ever, uh, you ought to get on Google and and just ask or however you do it, amen, uh, some of the names of God, how you pronounce them. And there's this gentleman that gets on there and he's, uh, it'll pop right up. And he does such a neat job. I wish I could let you listen to him on all the, all the names of God. He's like from, he sounds like he's from Israel or somewhere like that. But he does, uh, I just enjoy listening to him, amen. I wish I could share him with you. But anyway, God is our rock tonight. Uh, some, uh, some rock verses that I, I wrote down, I mean, they're all over the Bible, of course. Uh, 1 Samuel 2.2 2 is when Hannah prays that, no one is holy like the Lord, and that there is no rock like her God. In Deuteronomy uh, 32 4, Moses says, He is the rock, his work is perfect. Amen. David, uh, in, well, I wrote, I wrote down, uh, David describes God as a rock in Psalms over a dozen times. Amen. David knew that God was his rock. I mean, he was a shepherd boy. He knew what it was like to have a solid rock, amen, to, to stand on. So, pardon? Oh, you had a chuck of rock too, amen. Uh, 62 two, right below where you're at there, he says, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved, amen. And then there's one that I pray every day that Andy preaches about quite a bit. That's uh, Psalms 19.14, which is... Uh, What, Richard, do you know? I'm sorry. You're the one that, you turned me back on to it when I forgot it for a while, so I was going to pick on you, but. My rock and my redeemer, my strength, my rock. The uh, NLT says rock. Uh, King James says my strength. So anyway, he knows about his rock. But this one in 61 2 is the one that uh, when I was praying about, studying, uh, is the one that I stuck on. Uh, I was read commentaries and was looking at it, amen. And, and they say that uh, uh, it was a, a time that David was living when Absalom, his boy, rebelled against him, amen. He. he uh, it was a horrible time in David's life. Amen? It was a lonely time in David's life. It was a time when he felt like uh, nobody but Jesus, well, that God, amen, uh, had the answer. And so let's just read it real quick. 
Uh, Psalms 61 2. Uh, 61 1 says, Hear my cry, O God, attend in my prayer. And then 2 says, From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Amen. So here's this situation. Here's what had happened, just a, a real quick uh, recount of, so we know where David's heart is when he, when he writes this. Amen. Uh, Absalom was his, was his favorite son. Amen. He loved that boy. He loved him even though he didn't deserve to be loved by him. But he was, uh, Absalom was the one that David wanted to be the king after him at the right time. Amen. He had a, he was good looking. He had a great personality. Uh, uh, he had a, a kingly comeliness about him is what the, uh, the Bible or the uh, commentary say. Amen. He looked like a king. Amen. He looked like a guy. He looked like a leader. And David loved him. But here's the story. Uh, it's, it's from 2 Samuel 15. Amen. But don't turn there. I'm just going to hit the highlight or the low lights, really, uh, and, and what had happened to, to David when he, right when he writes this psalm. Number one, uh, Absalom's brother Anon, amen, David's other son, one of them, he fell in love with his sister. Amen. He fell in love with his sister. And he finally arranges it to where his sister uh, comes into him. He acts sick and whatnot. And she comes into him and he takes advantage of her. Amen. He forces her. He lays with her. And as soon as he was done, he hated her. He just hated her. He wanted her out of her sight. He shamed her. Amen. And she went back to live with Absalom. Amen. So guess what? Absalom had had him killed, amen. And as soon, and when he had him killed, he takes off running, <laughs> amen. He knows they're going to be he's going to be consequences of what he did. So he runs uh, to Geshur, me and G E S H U R, uh, Geshur, Geshur, amen. But I'm telling you, it broke David's heart. The whole situation just broke David's heart. He loved this boy. He loved the one, he was mourning for the one that had, had died, but he loved uh, Absalom. He loved him with, with all a person can love, a child, amen. It broke his heart. So he was gone for three years, and, and they arrange it to where David uh, brings him back, amen. And he brings him back for a while, and uh, they don't see each other, but Absalom sits at the gate, and he wins the heart of the people. They would come to him when they had a problem, amen, and he would solve it to where kind of a politician would do, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he would, he would make it right, amen, and, and the people were, were following Absalom. So, <laughs> so here's where we are, amen. David loved him. Uh, I wrote down a quote. It says, those things which we allow to take the chief place in our bosoms have the most power to bring us grief. Amen. I don't know if you've ever been there in your life. Amen. But uh, David was at a, a low point in his life with his kids. So guess what? Absalom, he's brought all these people in. He's solved a lot of problems. He's gained their heart of the people. Amen. And the Bible says that he blew the trumpet, which means uh, he set himself up as king in opposition to his father. He tries and he tries to take his father's life. Great guy, huh? The thing is, David loved him. He still loved him. Amen? And David, he, he, has, to, he has to take off. Him and a few friends and a small entourage, amen? They take off. They have to cross over the book Kedron, uh, the Bible says, with a few attendants and away from the sanctuary of God. Amen? David has to leave and he's running. Amen. So here he is. He's lost his. He's lost one son. Amen. His daughter has been put to shame. His other son, that he brought back. Amen. The son that he had pardoned. The son that he had honored by bringing him back. Amen. Uh, the son that he recalled from banishment. Amen. Uh, that he he rightly deserved. He did this to David. 
And David's out there in the middle of nowhere. Amen. And even though he's got people around him, he, he says, <coughs> he says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Amen. From the end of the earth. Shakespeare says this. He says, how sharper than a serpent's tooth is it to have a thankless child? Hmm. Amen. David was experiencing this. Amen. Still he loved him. He still loved him. So when, when David has to send out his army, amen, uh, to fight against uh, Absalom's army, he tells his people this, uh, his leaders, he says, deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. Amen. He still loved that boy. Can you imagine the desperation in his heart? <laughs> the low point in his life that he was in? And, amen, when Absalom was killed, do you remember the story of how he got killed? Huh? Some do and some don't. He was riding through the woods, that big hair that, it even tells you in the Bible how much it weighed. He had so much hair, amen, and it got caught in a tree, and there he's hanging there, amen. I've been thinking about this message for a couple of weeks now, and, and, and I just can't get that picture out of my head. And a guy comes along, and he says he has three darts, which I assume is three small knives. And he takes those three knives, and he sticks them through the heart of Absalom. And after all that he'd done to David, after all he'd done, how he'd rejected him and he'd run him off and he tried to kill him, amen? David says these words. <laughs> he says, oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Amen? What a time of desperation for David. <laughs> what a time. It was a horrible time. And I was thinking, as I, 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 I was thinking, man, I don't want my parents and my grandparents to feel that way. I want them to be proud of me. Amen. But I'm also thinking, I've got kids and grandkids that, I, that I'm concerned with today that I pray for every day that's running out there in the world. Amen. They're not running, they're not living with Jesus in their heart. And, 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 and as Absalom, unless while he was hanging there, he repented, amen, which I don't think he probably did, David knew in his heart that when Absalom died, he was going to a devil's hell for all eternity. Amen. What a heartbreaker, huh? Whew. So, let's see what we can learn about this psalm about David that says that the rock, his rock, is higher than I. Amen? Are you ready? Amen. All right? Number one, prayer is always available. David said, from the end of the earth, I will cry unto thee. Amen? From the end, of, well, was he at the end of the earth? Well, he crossed over the brook Kedron. He was out there, but he had people around him. He had friends around him. He had an army around him, actually. Amen. But David says uh, he, he's, he's all alone. Nobody else understands what he's going through. Have you ever been there? Amen. Surrounded by friends, surrounded by family, surrounded by loved ones, but they don't know what you're going through. They don't know the heartbreak that you're going through at that time. Huh? That's where David was. <clears throat> and you know what he says? He says, from the end of the earth, I will cry unto thee. Amen. He was far away from his friends. Amen. <laughs> All those that were around him. It felt like he was at the end of the earth. But he knew. <laughs> Amen. He knew. He knew that he and we could, can, cry out unto his God, unto our God. Amen. Whatever your situation is, wherever you're at, I don't know how you could get much lower than what David was at that time. <coughs> but he knew that from the end of the earth, he could cry out to God. 
He cried out to him. Uh, 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 he didn't have... He didn't have family around, amen, Uh, but he didn't have any human help around, amen, and his heart was overwhelmed. His heart was overwhelmed. You ever been in those situations? I could name a few in my life. I won't, amen, but I could where I felt like I can remember one time I had a diagnosis and I went down in the basement of my house all by myself. Amen. Beverly couldn't get it. My dad was living with us. He couldn't understand it. Nobody could understand what I was going through. Amen. I was, <laughs> I was living for the Lord. I was working hard on the job. I, I was doing the best that I could. I was t- uh, pastor in a church. And I get this diagnosis. Amen. And I remember getting down in the basement and just crying out to God, just bawling my big old eyes out, amen, saying, Lord, I don't know why I'm going through this, but whatever it is, I know, amen, that I can depend on you. And that's what David says here. Uh, uh, Spurgeon, I love Spurgeon's commentaries. He was, he was a preacher in the late 1800s, for, er, very early 1900s. Uh, he's tough, amen. But listen what he says here. He says, there are difficulties into which the true believer is brought that no human hand can remove. His spiritual affairs are weights too heavy for human strength to lift. Though all the giants of the earth should come and strain their backs until their shoulders uh, should give way and their limbs should totter beneath the enormous load, he says, yet the spiritual necessities of the Christian could not be carried by them. They are a burden intolerable for human shoulders. He says, none but God can sustain them. He says, when faith is little and fear is great, when hope is dim and doubt becomes terrible and dark, then we are far away from human help, but blessed be unto God we can cry out unto Him. Amen. David knew He knew who he could go to. No matter how low, no matter how bad things were, amen, he could cry out to his God. And he knew he was the rock, amen, that he could depend on. Not only that, amen, uh, he says he is the rock that is higher than I. And tonight as we sit here, Jesus Christ is that rock that is higher than I then you are higher than I, amen. And he loves you, amen. Uh, Jesus says this. He says to you and to me tonight. <laughs> he says, friend, come up higher. Come up higher. David understood. He was as low as he could go. But Jesus, his father at that time, amen, Jesus says to us, come up higher, amen. Uh, uh, he says, have you seen the joys which, uh, which he's reserved for them that, that love him? Have you seen those? Amen. Uh, Jesus Christ says, friend, he says, come up higher. Come up higher, amen. I was thinking about when I first got saved, amen, and and, and I sat in the lower room of repentance, amen. Then Jesus came in and he says, hey, come on up higher. Come on up higher, amen. And then I was thinking about when he took me to a room that called faith and my faith was growing, amen. Again, he said, friend, come on up higher, amen. Keep growing. Come on up, amen. When he took me to a room of of assurance, when I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew, amen, Jesus came to me and he said, friend, come up to the room, amen. Come up to a higher, amen. Oh, (coughs) he took me to the room of fellowship, amen. And I learned to fellowship with Jesus. And you know what he says? He says, friend, come on up higher. Come up higher, amen. And now, listen, I'm waiting. I'm waiting uh, uh, until the day he can say, come up higher and take me into his bosom, amen, and hold me for an eternity, amen, uh, to take me to be with him forever. Woo, (laughs) amen. Come up higher. Come up higher. I know Beverly and I, we we just took a trip to the Smokies, and they're beautiful, and I, I'm pretty sure that right now on the very tip top of the Smokies, there's snow up there. They're white, amen. Uh, we went down there a, a couple of years ago about when it got cold like this, and Beverly said, there's snow up there. And I said, that isn't snow. Wrong again, amen. We went up there that Cherokee run, whatever it is. It was snow, ice pack. We couldn't hardly get up the road. <laughs> 
But listen, if those are high and those are beautiful. But when I was in Germany, I went down to Munich and there was the Alps. And oh my goodness, they were towering, towering mountains. They were so high, they were enormous. <laughs> Amen? Compared to the Smokies, Jesus Christ, he's higher than all that. Amen? And he says to us tonight, he says, hey friend, he says, come on, come up higher, amen? So, <laughs> what should we do with a, with a hill that's higher than we are? Amen? What should we do with it? Just sit at its base? Just sit there? Amen? As we're called to come up higher? Amen? Is that what we're supposed to do? No! no. Amen? We need to start climbing that mountain. We need to start uh, coming up. Amen? Uh, lead us up to that rock that is higher. Higher than we are. Amen? I wrote down, ever, ever help me to be climbing, pressing forward, looking not on, on that which is behind, but on the things which are before. Amen. Paul says, pressing forward to the mark of the prize of our high calling in God in Christ Jesus, our rock. Amen. Oh, we need to keep on climbing. Keep on rising up. Keep on learning. Keep on growing. Keep on helping others. Keep on climbing. Amen. And there'll be somebody behind you. <laughs> there'll be somebody nipping at your heels, uh, trying to get your attention, trying to get you to come back. Amen. Uh, howling, amen. Barking and biting, amen. So that you don't climb to that, that high point. His name is Satan. He's your enemy, amen. But listen, when you climb up there with Jesus, you can't even hardly hear his howl, amen. You can't hardly even re realize that he's there, amen. <laughs> Thank God that Jesus Christ is the rock. Amen. Oh, listen. <laughs> you guys, uh, several of you have been here a long time and, and you've heard me talk about building bridges. Amen. And I can't talk about the rock without talking about building bridges. Because when you build a bridge in southern Illinois, in this area here, all these bridges being built around here, amen, guess what? We take that piling. We take that piece of metal that long piece of H pile, amen? And we put it on underneath a hammer, underneath a crane. Big old pile hammer, made, weighs tons and tons. <laughs> and we drive it, ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. And not only do we drive it to the rock, amen, but the state, it has us put these metal shoes on the bottom, which is just real hard steel, and you weld it right on the bottom of that H pile, Amen. And it's got a little, comes to a point so that when you get into the rock and you just keep driving and driving and driving and driving and driving, it gets not just in the top. It goes through the bedrock down to the solid rock. Amen. These bridges you cross today, <laughs> they're built on the solid rock that's in the formations right here in southern Illinois. <laughs> it gets down to it. Amen? To the rock. To the solid rock. Amen? Oh, I tell you. Everybody blames me for the bump on and off. But I'm telling you, that bridge don't move. It don't go down. The road on each side of it, it goes down. Them poor asphalt and concrete guys, it just keeps moving. Amen? But the bridge stays where it's at unless it falls down. Huh? Because it's built on the solid rock rock. We even make them the last 20, 30 years they made them earthquake proof. <laughs> yeah, but I ain't hiding under one when an earthquake comes I'm telling you. Amen? <laughs> but they say they're earthquake proof. <laughs> Built on the solid rock. When that rock moves, that bridge is going to move I'm telling you. Amen? But you know, when things come 
when trials come, when things come against me and, and when they come against you and uh, when, I'm, when I'm going through things and, and the wind's blowing, you know, of, the wind of, of sorrow, the wind of somebody mad at you, the wind of sickness, the wind of even uh, death coming upon us, amen. And, and when I feel that and I know things are coming against me in my head and in my heart, you know what I do? I, I stand on the rock. Huh? And on my rock, I don't know about yours, but on my rock, there's a footprint just for me. Amen? And guess what? It fits my toes. And my toes, they can fit right on top of that rock. Right? You look like you don't believe me, Melody. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> it's my rock. <laughs> and that can have my toe prints in it if I want. Amen? And I'm telling you, when that winds come, and you know what Jesus talks about, the man that built his house on the sand and built his house on the rock? Man, when those winds come, and it blows me around, and I may, I may move, and I may fall back, and I may come back up, amen? But I'm telling you, my feet are planted on the solid rock, amen? And it can't get me off. And that rock is not going to move, amen? Because that rock is Jesus Christ. Woo! <laughs> Amen? <laughs> so, no matter what, the solid rock is there. Huh? And no matter what, the rock will abide forever. Jesus Christ, our Father, the rock. There's a song that we used to sing, and uh, I've never been able to, to be a singer, obviously. Amen? Andy's a lot better than I am. Matter of fact, he was over at the school today. He had everybody singing out there in the hallway. And they were bragging on him. It was good. Amen. But there's a song about the solid rock. Amen. Standing on the solid rock. And it goes, I won't sing it, but let me read a little bit of it to you. Maybe you know it. Uh, it it's through my disappointments. Strife and discontentment. I cast my every care on the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain, or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. Amen. And the chorus goes, I'm standing on the rock of ages, safe from all the storms that rages. Rich but not from Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. Verse 3 says this, Now I'm pressing onward. Each step leads me onward. I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. And close is our relation, firm is its foundation, so on this solid rock I'll stay. Amen. I'm standing on the rock of ages, safe from all the storm that rages. Rich but not from Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. Jehovah Suri, Suri God is our rock. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all I got. Do you guys have anything? Any questions? Anything? Comments? Have you been there? Have you been there where you needed to just, the only thing you had, the only thing you could grab hold of, nobody else understood but you what you're going through. Amen? But you could call out to the rock that's always there. It's always sure. It's a firm foundation. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Amen. Higher. Higher than I've ever been. Higher than yesterday's wind. Amen. All right. All hearts and minds clear. All right. We're dismissed. Andy. Just two quick things before you dismiss. Number one, remind there's no men's breakfast Saturday. And secondly, uh, also Saturday, is, there's no men's breakfast Saturday. 
Yes. So if you don't do that, there'll be a church early. <laughs> Which is fine, thank you. Uh, and if you hadn't seen it, you ought to see the turkey Andy got last night. It's a beautiful bird. Amen. All right, we're dismissed.